This is Dr. Andrew Jones. In this edition of NRA Secrets, I'm going to be discussing Lewis's sore tooth and what you should be watching out for if your dog has a sore tooth. Hi you guys, so today's video is fairly impromptu. Um, it's come up because a few days ago Lewis was chewing on a bone that he was given to by one of the neighbors which was awesome, thank you for giving it to him. Um, but unfortunately the bone was a little bit small, a bit smaller than you know, typically what I would advise you giving your own animals. And it looks like he's cracked a tooth. I'll just show you the bone, I'll show you Lewis. I'm going off to the clinic shortly, so I'm actually gonna then you know, do a little bit of video there, show you exactly what we find on him and what needs to happen to fix it. You guys, here's Lewis looking not so happy. We're just about to head off to the clinic. Um, I just grabbed, I got a few of the bones, the one that he cracked his tooth on I've already tossed because he splintered it, but it's just this, it's just, it's normally be fine if it was the full length, but it's a small enough femur bone that he can just get his mouth around and start to chew on. So he got it into his, the back of his mouth, those big premolars are, and he started chewing on it, and it looks like what he's done is you know, crack or fracture his carnasial tooth. It's also known as the upper fourth premolar it and the other big canine tooth those are the sort of foremost common teeth that tend to fracture in our dogs oh boy. so you guys so it's on I'm, I'm just gonna show you where it is it really hurts to touch it so I'm gonna lift up Lewis's lips and it's right oh good boy good boy Lewis I'll show you his other side actually because it hurts that side to show it So it's on the other side, but here it is here. My finger is. That's the big the big upper fourth premolar. That's one of the main teeth that they do all their serious chewing with. Um, so my finger's on the the right the right side. And it's the left one that you there's a couple things I want you to think about too, as far as if this happens with your dog, you're not, not able to get into the clinic right away, say it's Sunday afternoon such as Lewis, and they're not open, you want to be able to give your dog some form of pain relief. Um, I'm going to mention a few different options. So just to start out with, I actually gave him some valerian, which is this here. It's a valerian tincture. Um, it, I use it, and it's used in animals um, for pain, for muscle spasms, and also to be slightly sedating. <clears throat> so he was really sore and he was anxious. So I, I look at a dose of about a half a mil, for 20 pounds of body weight, somewhere every six to eight hours. Um, That's so why I gave Lewis actually two meals um, that afternoon, and two meals later that evening, he seemed much more relaxed. But secondly, I used a conventional medication that I had on hand, which was aspirin. Um, the conventional, the aspirin dose is 325 milligrams for 40 pounds of body weight twice daily. You, you don't want to be giving it, uh, if your dog is any, in, on any other non steroidal anti-inflammatory drug, you know, such as Medicam, etc. Or if your dog is on steroids, you know, such as prednisone. So then I also gave him aspirin. And the last thing I gave him was a, a homeopathic that I had, which is Arnica. Um, super safe. A lot of guys really respond well to it. So I actually gave him four Arnica, cap Arnica capsules. I gave him four right away, four later that evening, um, four the following day. So he's been fairly comfortable. You know, we're now heading in shortly. The other couple things you could think about as far as uh, for giving pain relief um, to your dogs if they've got a tooth root fracture or a tooth fracture. Um, the other one would be if you have any of the topical, the oral gel. There's a couple different gels that people will use. Essentially they, can't, they contain some form of topical anesthetic and a small amount applied locally just above the gum line for our dogs are generally quite safe. You don't want to lather it on. You're just doing a small amount right on the area of the tooth that's affected. That would be fine, um, given no more than three times a day. And then the last last thing to consider, I mean, if you have it on hand, is the curcumin or the 95% curcuminoids. And the dose of the curcumin is 100 milligrams for 10 pounds of body weight. And for this kind of pain, you want to be giving it every 12 hours. Hi guys. So this is the next day following Lewis having the dental procedure that I was talking about. Um, as you can see, Lewis is resting pretty comfortably. Um, first what I'll do is, is I, I took a clip of my cell phone, so I'll let you watch it now. 
And what it shows is Lewis in dental surgery. So you see him under anesthesia. And you see a little bit of a close up. And so I'm zooming in on his mouth. And I took a picture there, of taking a shot of one of the teeth that were taken out. So in total, he had three teeth taken out. It actually wasn't his conasial tooth, it was the two teeth behind it. So the, the first molar on the right upper and right left side. And as well, in the far corner of the right left side, he had a, actually what looks like a puncture and a big section of necrotic tissue and a small hole. Which what I'm hoping is that actually that, that was from him chewing on the bone and getting really sh shard of that bone, puncturing into the back of his mouth, causing the infection. And that's why he was so sore and would let me go ahead and you know, open his mouth in the first place. So and it meant having, his, having those teeth removed, um, having a section of that tissue um, taken out, and also a small sample of that, of that tissue um, was then taken out and sent away. Um, and that was at the Nelson Animal Hospital. And so that was sent off, so we should know next week exactly what was going on. And my big hope is it was just a puncture and a secondary infection, and you know he's going to respond uh, with the supportive care and some antibiotics. Then I just wanted to show you then sort of what he's on. So initially he's got to be on some antibiotics. He's got a serious you know, mouth infection um, from that bone. So he's on these, they were a Moxel 500. He's getting two of them twice a day. It's really hard to open his mouth. So what I've done is just sort of put them into a bit of canned food. So if you'll watch in here. Lewis. Oh boy, Lewis. Lewis really likes the canned food. Good boy. So he likes it so much that he'll just go ahead and whatever is in there. And initially, I thought I could go ahead and give him some type of liquid antibiotic. Turns out not the case because just trying to get it into his mouth is not. Good boy, Lewis.